So the nose is a lateral wall of the nose is a very very often repeated question in the theory exam for your anatomy question. So the knowledge is also very important for all of us because uh, many times you may be using the nose for uh, nowadays for fiber optic uh, intubation or some oral procedures that are done by dentists or the ear surgeon you have to do a nasal intubation so for all that you must have a knowledge about your uh, intubation so the nose is a normal and natural entry point to the respiratory tract so it is there the floor of the nose that is the palate also forms the roof of the mouth So this is a common uh, head area. The palate, hard and soft palate, this forms the floor for the nose. At the same time, they form the roof for the mouth, and they line horizontally. <coughs> and uh, you have the frontal sinus, sinus sinus, superior concha, turbinate, middle concha, or the turbinate and inferior concha. All these things are connected to your nose. <coughs> and the recess <coughs> below the concha or the turbinate is called the meatus so we must have some knowledge about the superior meatus middle meatus and inferior meatus of course previn mentioned what are all the ducts or the openings that are present in these stage three so the lacrimal duct opens here the maxillary sinus and the frontal sinus they open here the ethmoid sinus opens here so the <coughs> parasinusal or parasinusal sinuses if they get infected so no, they all uh, we get this opening can get blocked and the accumulation of all the fluid and uh, uh, infective material that is the reason for the sinusitis people developing uh, the nasal septum which is shown here it is not always as you see a so straight it may be deviated either anteriorly or posteriorly because it extends right through the nose to separate it into the right and left nostril and the area so the septum may be deviated either anteriorly or posteriorly and so whenever you use the nasal airway you have to assess the patency of the nasal passage so you must uh, Ask the patient to close one nostril by pressing the L and S I to the septum, and ask them to breathe heavily or blow through the other nostril. A similar procedure can be done by closing the opposite side. The patient should be able to tell you which nostril he feels air is coming out more easily. People who have a deviated septum will have a very very clinically significant obstruction to the flow. and they will be able to tell you sir my left nostril i am not getting any air flow at all right nostril uh, it comes out freely and that is the clue you have to take to select that nostril for intubation and not the wrong one that will cause more damage and bleeding so this is a very important clinical or uh, application you have to know about with the setup and uh, nose is divided into this uh, because of their function the uh, area which is close to the ethmoid the upper portion to the base of the skull is the olfactory region where the olfactory nerves come for smell the turbinates form the what is called the respiratory region because they are covered as we said with a thick mucous membrane with a high vascularity they are doing the function of humidification and raising the temperature of the atmospheric air that we breathe in so that is a major important function so any uh, dryness in this uh, respiratory the mucosa will reduce the uh, humidification function and there is an auditory tube opening posteriorly the nasopharynx and the initial vestibule which has got the air follicles here they help in filtering the large pol um, bacteria i mean large uh, pollutants that are there in the atmospheric air by filtering it and preventing to enter the lower air passage and of course the cartilages they are all made up of nasal bones everything he mentioned 
and the bony framework is formed by this uh, seven bones ethmoid bone frontal bone lacrimal bone nasal bones and palatine and sphenoid bones so there are three cartilages which contribute to the nasal septum one is called the septal cartilage the other is the perpendicular plate of ethmoid and third is vomer why we should know about it there is a surgery called smr can you anyone tell me what is the expansion for that smr submucosal resection name also for that many of you are good in ent how many of you got good marks in your ent in your ug period submucous reposition or septoplasty is a very important cosmetic procedure done by the ent or the plastic surgeons for correction of the nasal deformity Yeah, especially some of the actresses, Mr. Yer uh, Sri Devi got operated for a crooked nose by the uh, plastic surgeon with whom I was working. And after the surgery, she became very, very popular and very started earning very well. So many Chota actresses, they all came and had the septoplasty done with us. So this is one of the uh, so this septal cartilage. perpendicular plate of ethmoid and vomer are the three important things and this is where the deviation or the <clears throat> obstruction can be done and in the inferior nasal concha which is the longest and broadest of the concha formed by an independent bone the other two are to together and the concha is covered by a mucous membrane that contains large vascular spaces and it's one of the three that work both to humidify and clear the air that passes into the nasal pharynx whereas the superior and middle nasal concha arise from the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid so this perpendicular plate of the ethmoid also that it projects as the superior and middle concha middle concha is found between the superior and inferior nasal and plays a role in humidifying as well as clearing the air of micro particles and superior nasal concha is a bony shelf located above the nasal and below the sphenoethmoidal recess so this relationship is important because when there may be a hypertrophy turbinate sometimes present because of allergy and repeated exposure to the pollutants in that cases you can see the inferior turbinate projecting very badly from the lateral aspect of the near the ala so that if that is present you have to be very careful while introducing your tube at the in, or nostrils because at the time itself you can injure the turbinate and there may be profuse bleeding happening so that is a reason why you have to know about the correct location and the, the nature of this concha so here you can see this is the superior turbinate bone and this gap here is called the meatus the it is like a sheet of paper rolled the concha are nothing but a rolled sheet of paper so it, you can imagine a curved sheet with a gap again another curved sheet with a gap and a third curved sheet with a gap so that is the recess is called the meatus and this is how they are all connected with each other and uh, main function of this concha or turbinate is to increase the surface area of the nasal cavity this uh, increases the amount of air that can come into contact with the cavity walls they also disrupt fast laminar flow of air making it slow and turbulent then the air spends longer time in the nasal cavity so that it can be humidified so what is coming in as a laminar flow is converted into turbulent flow by this uh, curved bones and their recesses so that the air remains longer for humidification what are the openings into the nasal cavity the frontal maxillary and anterior ethmoidal sinuses all of them open in the middle meatus the middle ethmoidal sinus empty into a structure called ethmoidal bulla and the posterior ethmoidal as the ethmoidal sinuses they are three anterior middle and posterior so the anterior alone opens into the middle meatus the middle and posterior uh, at the level of superior meatus the only structure not to empty onto the lateral valve of the nasal cavity is the sphenoid sinus and it drains into the posterior roof so 
any infection that is occurring posteriorly while you are trying to do any maneuver can directly communicate with the sphenoid sinus and sphenoid sinus can drain into the uh, intracranial vessels and the infection can spread to the brain and nasolacrimal duct acts as a drain for tears from the eye and it opens into the interior meatus the auditory or eustachian tube opens into the nasopharynx at the level of the inferior meatus and it allows middle ear to equalize with the atmospheric air pressure so, so all of you would have traveled in the aircraft and when it goes high up you know you get a blocked feeling because of this particular communication and uh, so the this is how the so sinus sinus you can see almost abutting the uh, face of the skull that is draining here ethmoid sinus opening into the middle meatus and the frontal and maxillary sinus are there opening here and the nasolacrimal duct opening in the inferior meatus so this so picture you can remember to uh, write where these things are opening now the next thing we have to know is nasal innervation nasal innervation can be simplified dividing it into internal or mucosal and external skin aspect of the nose because uh, the, uh, some septoplasties or some uh, rhinoplasties they can be done under comfortably with uh, local infiltration itself instead of giving ga so plastic surgeons some um, of them prefer to do the rhinoplasties with the uh, nerve blocks that can be conducted there so the external nose is innervated by the ophthalmic division and maxillary division that is v1 and v2 that is fifth cranial nerve or the trigeminal nerve which are the first two divisions of the trigeminal nerve mm. the superior aspect of the nose including the tip is supplied by the infratrochlear nerve and the supratrochlear nerve and the external nasal branch of the anterior ethmoidal nerve these are the three nerves which supply the external aspect of the nasal skin the infraorbital nerve supplies the inferior and lateral aspects of the nose extending even to the lower eyelids so if you see this is the protrochlear infratrochlear so this area of the uh, uh, nose this area of the nose these are all supplied by this external skin also this is the external branch of the anterior ethmoidal nerve and this is the infraorbital nerve so all these things are supplying the uh, nose area here and the internal nasal mucosal cavity is divided into nasal septum lateral wall and cribriform plate and the superior nerve tract of the lateral nasal wall supplied by the anterior and posterior ethmoid nerve the sphenopalatal ganglion is located at the posterior end of the middle terminate and innervates posterior nasal cavity the anterior and posterior ethmoid nerves and the sphenopalatal ganglion through the nasopalatine nerve provide sensation to most of the septum the septal area and the cribriform plate holds the special sensory branch of the olfactory nerve so any damage to the the root of the nose inside this area if this is damaged the olfactory function will be affected so whenever you want to do a nasal intubation with your fibroptic or a ET tube you should never aim it towards the root of the nose it should always towards the floor of it should be aimed to the floor of the table and then you will be safe so this is how these nerves are there so the uh, anterior ethmoidal nerve posterior ethmoidal branch septal branch nasopalatine and greater palatine all these things are supplying the septal area now coming to the vascular supply it has got a rich vascular supply allows it to effectively change the humidity and temperature and uh, they are all from internal and external carotid arteries that is why any bleeding from the nose will be very profuse and profound because of the connection between these two major vessels and what are all the internal carotid branches anterior ethmoidal artery posterior ethmoidal and they are branches of the ophthalmic artery both the anterior and posterior ethmoidal are branches of ophthalmic artery and they descend into the nasal cavity through the cribriform plate similarly external carotid branches are sphenopalatine greater palatine and superior labial 
lateral nasal and the venous drainage follow the arteries they drain into pterygoid plexus facial vein and cavernous sinus so this cavernous sinus communication is a very important thing which can transmit any septic foci from the nose into the brain to cause meningitis or other problems and few nasal veins join with the sagittal sinus also a dural venous sinus this represents the potential pathway for infection to spread from nose to nasopharyngeal cavity and uh, so this picture we showed this uh, communication between all these major vessels to produce a bleeding which is called the lytic area and the nasal airway obstruction can be uh, nasal airway is formed and supported by bones of the skull and needs no internal artificial support to keep it open but it becomes easily obstructed by congestion and edema of the mucosa so that is the main reason it is not the bony occlusion but it is the mucosal edema which causes the uh, obstruction to the air passage especially in children who also have adenoid lymphatic tissue in the nasopharynx It results in chronic obstruction and produces either snoring or obstructive sleep apnea. The obstruct or crying child will often have a congested or a blocked nose, and this may be apparent after induction of anesthesia, and we may be finding it difficult to ventilate the baby. So the remedy is to place an oropharyngeal airway if the patient is uh, anesthetized, so that you can have a open airway to ventilate. Whereas in the elderly patients with no speech, again a similar problem of obstruction can happen, and what you require is a chin lift. So this is the patient with uh, who has got no uh, support there, and the, the whole mouth is then this totally edentulous patient. So the upper and lower jaw they come close to each other, closing the entire uh, upper airway. Now coming to topical anesthesia and medication, insertion of a nasal airway, nasotracheal tube or fibroscope, which is advisable to use topical vasoconstrictor in order to open up the airway and prevent mucosal damage. So either xylometazoline, which is also in, can be used and take several minutes to work. So it should be applied sufficiently early. This is a practical tip. So when I was working in plastic surgery, I always asked them to put the Xylometazoline or maybe a drop from the ward itself before shifting the patient two or three times, so that you will get a very good vasoconstrictor effect. And four percent lidocaine is suitable for topical anesthesia of nose and pharynx and larynx. Why four percent lidocaine? Generally, we find all the books, all the teaching says you have to use four percent lidocaine. Why not use two percent or one percent? Can anyone answer that? Nowadays we have even 10% spray, so we are always using a higher concentration of lidocaine and not a lower concentration. If you're not answering, you please find out and tell me next time. Right, I'm fed up of answering every question myself. Huh? Dip the local anesthetic, pass a constrictor into the nose with two ml syringe and slip it through a fine needle attached to the syringe. An atomizer using oxygen flow also can be used. What are the uses of nasal airway? It is useful, better tolerated in a semi-conscious patient than oropharyngeal airway. And do not use a nasopharyngeal airway when there is a nasal skull fracture. Nasotracheal intubation allows free surgical access to mouth and helps the surgeon in dental, maxillofacial, plastic, and ENT procedures. Nasal tube normally needs two to three centimeter longer than oral one. All of you, I think you know how to calculate the depth you have to insert uh, the length of the tube. And blind nasal intubation can be valuable rescue technique in case of unexpected difficult laryngoscopy. Nasal intubation and the direct vision when you do it in passing the nasal tube, pass the tube. The level of the tip is uh, the epiglottis. Make the tube uh, with a felt tip at the level of the nostril. You have to mark that uh, distance. The end of anesthesia, when you withdraw the tube to this mark, uh, you, may, you are sure that the where the tip is in the trachea or the glottis. So always use a well lubricated tube. 
and you can soften it for 30 seconds in warm, by immersing in warm water especially when you use the current day uh, disposable uh, plastic tubes uh, it's always safer to dip it in warm water for 30 seconds it will become more soft and uh, once you lubricate it well the chances of injury is very much reduced although some resistance is common never use excessive force to pass the tube through the nose hole if you are unable to advance the tube through the nose then try the other one check that your angle of insertion is parallel to the floor of the nose try gentle rotation of the tube try insertion through the other nostril these are all the other alternatives if the first nostril you are not able to pass the tube or use a smaller tube so you have four options you must do the angulation correctly you can gently rotate the tube or you can uh, insert it to the other nostril or reduce the size of the tube instead of using 7.5 you can use a 7 for an adult coming to fiber optic nasal intubation anesthetize the upper airway and lower way as uh, you said spray as you go technique pick the position of the tube after intubation and make sure it has not entered a bronchus nasal oxygen therapy also we use this for uh, nose is used for nasal oxygen therapy which allows the patient to eat talk and cough normally and if prongs are available the nose can continue to do the humidification and warming and so a separate humidifier is not needed when you use the nasal prong and transvenoid pituitary excision also is done through the nasal root so you need an oral intubation with a throat pack to avoid blood getting aspirated into the lung for rhinoplasty open or closed rhinoplasty can be done under local anesthesia topical infiltration as i said earlier for which you must know the sensory innervation and uh, okay. blobs so continuing with the airway block you must know the innervation which you have already done the second thing is what agent you have to use for topicalization application te- technique how do you do that to topicalize and any regional technique either by landmark or ultrasound or guided you can do and any sedation you have to give so sensory innervation of course we have seen all that and uh, praveen also has beautifully explained all that so the nasal region applied by nasal trigeminal oral region glossopharyngeal laryngeal region by vagus so at least you remember the main uh, nerve name even if you don't remember the branches doesn't matter this picture again he showed how the sensory supply is going there so mostly the greater and lesser palatine nerves are there and the glossopharyngeal nerve and superior laryngeal and recurrent laryngeal these are the four important things so earlier it was cocaine which was popularly used which had also a vasoconstrictor property apart from being a very good local anesthetic agent and that was the first local anesthetic agent to be identified who identified the cocaine usage and in which surgery it was used this year of a solution i asked you earlier is 2 ml of 10% cocaine 1 ml of 1 in 1000 adrenaline 2 ml of sodium bicarbonate 5 ml of sodium chloride which makes a total of 10 ml which is called the moffet solution moffet was an army returned uh, ent surgeon so he used this for all rhinolo- rhinological procedures as a local anesthetic for vasoconstriction and decongestion It was also used to topicalize the nasal mucosa to provide the optimal conditions for nasal intubation. But uh, no, cocaine is not available now, so you can't use it. But it, it is sometimes asked as a short note question in your theory. Lidocaine is commonly used. 4% and 10% sprays are used. Systemic absorption from there is uh, quite, chances are very high. So you have to be very uh, wary in using the correct dose. Vasoconstrictor like uh, xylomethylene, phenylephrine also can be used. And the application techniques are spray from the container, soak to ribbon gauze, cotton application, McKenzie, mucosal atomizer, inhalation of nebulizer, 
is attained. All those points he already mentioned, so I don't want to repeat that. So this is the 10% spray. All of you would have been aware. This is the 2% xylocaine jelly, water soluble jelly, which is uh, used uh, even by urologists as well as by us as a uh, lubricant solution. This is the 4% uh, xylocaine spray, and this is the needle for spraying. And uh, these are all the nasal packing tray what you require, mostly done by anti surgeons. And uh, sometimes we may also have to do it for uh, before you do the uh, nasal intubation. So the ribbon gauze is placed, and this is the technique of uh, packing it. You need what is called a bayonet forceps, and you soak the ribbon gauze in uh, 4% xylocaine. 2 to 4 ml and then you take that and you have to pack it in that uh, meatal region under the turbinate. Each turbinate you have to first the inferior turbinate, middle turbinate and uh, superior turbinate. So that is where that is how you should be packing it. And uh, this is the McKenzie spray, this is the atomizer, this is the nebulizer and this is the side port by which you do. Coming to regional techniques, you can classify them into landmark techniques and you can, so glossopharyngeal can be blocked by the posterior, it supplies the posterior third of the tongue vallicula and also the superior surface, the uh, tongue surface of the epiglottis is also supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve. And uh, this is uh, very useful in abolishing the risk reflex so that uh, it can be uh, done by intraoral and peristylar as he mentioned and the most easily blocked with the palatoglossal arch. In this picture the same picture he showed and coming to the superior laryngeal nerve again he showed that uh, picture how exactly you have to do. So what you have to do is hold the hyoid bone like this and then uh, you can push the hyoid bone to one side so that you get this gap between the hyoid carnua and the thyroid cartilage. So this is the point you have to, you can go and hit the hyoid bone lower edge and then slip it down and pierce that membrane. Very easy to perform, just 0.5 or 1 ml of uh, local anesthetic is sufficient to block that nerve. Recurrent laryngeal nerve, this is a transpracheal technique where you just go by that. Nowadays because ultrasound is being used, you may get it this in OSCE also, so the pictures you should be aware of. It can be identified by, so this is the same uh, external laryngeal nerve block using the uh, ultrasound. The probe should be uh, parallel to the bone, not uh, vertical. So, so what is the structure you will see? You will see the hyoid bone, this is the nerve, this is the thyroid cartilage, this is the cephalar, this is the cardiac. So this is how the picture shows. Now translaryngeal for uh, higher, you have to hold the thing vertically. So there you held it parallel to the hyoid bone. Here you keep it at right angle to hyoid and uh, uh, thyroid and cricoid cartilage and puncture in between the two. So the readily identifiable structures are tracheal rings, tricoid cartilage, thyroid cartilage, tricothyroid membrane. And the probe is placed longitudinally in the midline. The tracheal rings can be seen and then the probe can be advanced cranially so that the tricot cartilage can be seen next. This is slightly elongated structure that is larger and more superficial than the tracheal ring. The probe is further advanced cranially, the thyroid cartilage can be seen. Tracothyroid membrane lies between the caudal border of the thyroid cartilage and the subclot border of the tracheal cartilage. So that you have to keep the probe in midline. With the cracker thyroid membrane in the middle of the base scene on the monitor and then insert it uh, the patient's neck using the marker pen and the portion of the cracker membrane can be located and transverse the nerve block can be performed. And uh, the sedation technique, uh, aim of conscious sedation not to allow the patient to tolerate the procedure but to provide optimal intubating conditions especially for uh, fiber optic. Avoid over sedation, never give uh, over sedation because the patient is uh, fearing that patient may not cooperate, which may result in loss of airway and uh, inability to maintain oxygenation. 
so ideal sedation would involve a comfortable patient he should be responsive responding to command uh, with a maintained airway spontaneously breathing but at the same time they must have amnesia they should not remember the procedure and the two drugs that you can use are remifentanil and dexmedetomidine so safe sedation can be achieved by slowly administering the sedative drugs and continuously communicating with the patient sometimes bi spectral index is also used to guide the sedation and uh, usd transcutaneous aristidical transverse oblique plane major clinical identification or prediction of difficult airway identification of tracheal thyroid membrane for transpharyngeal and the prediction of endotracheal tube size below the glottic level determination of double w1 size w1 tube insertion and confirmation of et tube and confirmation of correct et tube depth and especially in pediatric patient and tracheal rapid ultrasound saline test trust involves inflating et tube cups with saline instead of air to overcome the problem of non visualization of air filled et tube cup so it determines correct placement of et tube when saline filled et tube cup is visualized with ultrasound probe in transverse orientation at the level of the sternal notch and detecting endobronchial intubation elicitation of the percutaneous dilatational tracheostomy and uh, yield down ultrasound prediction of post excavation spider prediction of laryngeal mask airway position assessment of vocal cord determination and sacral laryngeal nerve palsy and useful in patients who are uncooperative for laryngoscopy or fob and detection of tracheal stenosis and determination of tracheal wall thickening tracheal wall invasion due to thyroid cancer identification of intrathoracic extent of goiter diagnosing epiglottitis diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea fundamental ultrasound is used for that the ultrasound airway anesthesia to facilitate awake intubation limitations are operation of ultrasound requires the sound knowledge of sonographic anatomy and image acquisition is dependent on equipment and the operator interpretation of this operator dependent and it takes time to learn the technique so also additional